Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Live the World Ministries. You know the deal. Uh, there are some books that um, I thought we should mention that uh, you might like. I used to have them in my collection, but either they got stolen or lost or whatever. Uh, the uh, first book is uh, The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel, S-T-R-O-B-E-L. Uh, pretty good book. I think it's uh, pretty excellent. And then there's another one, uh, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell, M-C-D-O-W-E-L-L. -L. That's a pretty good book. And then uh, Josh also writes, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. That's another good one. And then uh, there's another really good book. Another good book is uh, Christian Secrets to a Happy Life by Hannah Whitehall Smith. Uh, take a look at them. Now there is a branch of what they call, for those of you that are mostly into OL, oh, well, that have the gift of evangelism. That is a gift I do not have. I am a teacher. And a teacher, well, an evangelist will take somebody and turn them into a baby Christian. Well, hopefully a teacher will take the baby, kicking and screaming, and teach him how to be a soldier. Very, very few babies end up being soldiers. Very, very few. But there is a branch of what you could say evangelism that they call apologetics. And yes, it comes from the same word as apology. But no, you're not apologizing for believing in Jesus. No, the word apology uh, comes from the Greek root word, and it means to give an answer, you know. Uh, why were you late for class, Jimmy? Well, mommy had a flat tire. You know, Timmy gave an answer. But there is a thing where somebody, uh, I, th I don't remember if it's Strobel or uh, Josh McDowell, or who expands upon this. I mean, some of these books I've read over 20 years ago. But I believe it was C.S. Lewis, which I'm not real crazy about C.S. Lewis. But supposedly, he's the one that invented the thing. Was Jesus a liar, a lunatic, or is he Lord? And just to give you a brief overview, but if Jesus knew he was not God, then he was lying. But if he was also a liar, then he was also a hypocrite, as he told others to be honest uh, with each with believers and to the Lord. Then if that's the case, that would make Jesus unspeakably evil, being a mere man claiming to be the Son of God. He said, I and my Father are one. And he... Uh, told others to forsake their beliefs in Moses and the temple and to trust him, to trust in him for their eternal destiny. The Pharisees, which are religious leaders of the you-know-what-wish uh, discipline, actually charged Jesus with having a demon or a devil, which the Bible refutes. And if Jesus knew he was lying, you know, if Jesus knew that he was lying, then he would have been a fool knowing that his claims of being equal with God the Father would lead to his crucifixion. I mean, all he had to do was say, oh, okay, no, I'm not, um, I'm not the Son of God. And they wouldn't have crucified him. 
Matter of fact, they'd have been happy to do that, you know, have him deny his claims. So, John Stuart Mill, a philosopher, skeptic, and antagonist of Christianity, admitted that Jesus was a first-rate ethnicist, supremely worthy of our attention and emulation. But about the life and sayings of Jesus, there is a stamp of personal originality combined with prof of insight. And I'm reading something here. In the very first rank of men, a sublime, sublime genius of whom our species can boast, when this preeminent Jesus is combined with the qualities of probably the greatest moral reformer and martyr to that mission, whoever existed upon the earth. Religion cannot be said to have made a bad choice in pitching on this man as the ideal representative and guide of humanity, nor even now, would it be easy even for an unbeliever to find a better translation of the rule of virtue from the abstract into the concrete than to endeavor so to live that Christ would approve our life? Unquote. Mills is saying that Jesus was a perfect example of all that he taught. His words and actions matched. Let us also consider the statement by William Lecky a noted Irish historian and dedicated oppo opponent of organized Christianity. Yeah, I'm an opponent of organized Christianity too. And I quote, It is reserved for Christianity to present to the world an ideal character which through all the changes of 18 centuries have has inspired the hearts of men with an impassioned love, has shown itself capable of acting on all ages, nations, temperates, and conditions, has been not only the highest pattern of virtue, but the strongest incentive to its practice, and has ex exercised so deep an influence that it may be truly said that the simple record of Jesus' three short years of active life has done more to regenerate and to soften mankind than all the disquisitions of philosophers and all other exhortations of moralists." Unquote. As church historian Philip Schaff adds, Jesus was, quote, a character so original, so complete, so uniformly consistent, so perfect, so human, and yet so high above all human greatness, who could be neither fraud nor fiction. Schaff notes that Jesus never lost the even balance of his mind, but sailed serenely over all the troubles and persecutions as the sun above the clouds, who always returned the wisest answers to tempting questions, who calmly and deliberately predicted his own death on the cross. Unquote. Rather than gain power for himself, Jesus modeled himself serving others. And he did. He, you know, healed the sick, uh, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind. I, you know, so. He taught his disciples to do the same. Jesus shunned stepping into the political role people expected of him because it wasn't his purpose. So is Jesus a liar? You decide. Was Jesus a lunatic? Was he crazy? So if Jesus wasn't a liar, is it feasible that he only thought he was God? You know? I mean, it's possible that, you know, somebody can think they're God. So did Jesus only believe that he was God come in the flesh? Christian philosopher Peter K-R-E-F-T definitely shows why we must reject this option. Quote, A measure of your insanity is the size of the gap between what you think you are and what you really are. If I think I am the greatest philosopher in America, I am only an arrogant fool if I think I am Napoleon. I am probably over the edge if I think I am a butterfly. I am fully embarked from the sunny shores of sanity, but if I think I am God, I am even more insane because the gap between anything finite and the infinite, God is even greater than the gap between any two finite things, even a man and a butterfly. Well then, why not liar or lunatic? Because almost no one who has read the Gospels can honestly and seriously consider that option, the savviness, the canonists, the human wisdom, the attractiveness of Jesus emerged from the Gospels 
with an unavoidable force to any but the most hardened and prejudiced reader. Unquote. He adds, quote, Jesus has in, an, in abundance precisely those three qualities which liars and lunatics most conspicuously lack. One, his practical wisdom, his ability to read human hearts. Two, his deep and winning love, his passionate compassion, his ability to attract people and make them feel at home and forgiven, his authority, and above all, three, his ability to astonish his unpredictability, his creativity. Liars and lunatics are all so dull and predictable. No one knows the Gospels and human beings can seriously entertain the possibility that Jesus was a liar or a lunatic, a bad man. Unquote. The idea that Jesus was self-deceived or delusional is not compatible with the impression he left on history. Uh, and think about it. Even our dating system, uh, 2022 AD, Anno Domino, which is Latin for year of our Lord. So, uh, so is Jesus Lord? Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? Peter responded, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's in Matthew 16, verse 15 and 16. Like Peter, we can decide to believe that Jesus made truthful claims about being God. The Bible tells us that we must each choose for ourselves whether or not to accept Jesus as Lord. He can be held accountable. Oh, and we are to be held accountable for our decision. Can the Bible prove that Jesus is God? Mm, maybe, maybe not. But archaeological discoveries continue to prove the Bible's legitimacy as a truthful document. Uh, with that being said, the Bible is history by Werner Keller, uh, a German archaeologist. Really excellent. It was written in the 50s. I would suggest getting the original um, edition. The older, the better. Always. Um, so why wouldn't we accept Jesus? His actions validated his words. His resurrection proved his deity. Now, something I'd like to add. You got to remember something. When your friends tell you you're the greatest thing in the world, you know, take it with a grain of salt, right? When mom tells you, oh, you're, you were the most handsome boy in the whole world when you were growing up, or you were the prettiest girl in the whole world growing up. Yeah, 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 mom, sure. But I tell you what, when your enemies, those that don't like you and hate you, admit to something along those lines, that's worth listening to. In even uh, historians that lived in the time of the Romans and around the time that Christ lived, like Josephus, which was a Jewish historian that worked for the Romans, and even the Jews that lived around the time of Christ in their Talmud, their Babylonian Talmud, which Talmud means learning, Babylonian learning, mystery Babylon the Great, right? Even they admit that Jesus performed miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. They admit it. But of course, they say he did it by the power of the devil. They say that he learned magic when he was in Egypt. Uh, remember when Joseph was told in a dream to flee, that Herod was going to try to kill him? Uh, and he was told to go to Egypt. And then the Bible said, out of, out of Egypt have I called my son, with a re reference to uh, Moses and the first Passover. Yeah. So they, they admit that Jesus did miracles. They're, his enemies admitted he did miracles. But they, they teach that he did these miracles by the power of the devil and learned magic in Egypt. But uh, it's up for us to decide, well, 
Did he learn magic in Egypt and do his miracles by the power of the devil? Or did he do them because he was God come in the flesh? So, you know, but uh, those books that I mentioned earlier, uh, they're some worthy reading. They really are. Um, if you are of the evangel, evangel, evangelical persuasion, well, Hannah Whitehall Smith, Secrets for Christian Life, that's not necessarily, excuse me, evangelism, but the other three books are The Evidence, More Than a Carpenter, and The Case for Christ. The Case for Christ, he was a uh, newspaper journalist and then decided to, supposedly decided to look into the evidence of Jesus and became a believer. Is it true? Well, one day we'll, we will all find out. I suspect a lot of these Christian authors, not necessarily these guys, but uh, will probably find their way to the lake of fire that they wrote books just to make money and to deceive people. But uh, I don't know. We'll find out one day. So, all right. Well, this is Chaplain Bob. Um, hope you enjoy this. I will get back to the um, uh, John the Baptist series uh, next time. And uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.